start off by explaining some background of this project as well as our motivation behind it. Between 2009 and 2013, 26% of all drowning deaths were due to swimming, and drowning is the third leading cause of unintentional injury death worldwide. Being alone and without proper supervision is a major contributor to drowning, especially for ages 1 to 4. With the Drowno, we hope to improve the current market standard in drowning detection devices. The current devices include the eye swim band, inflatable wristbands, and the swim eye. Each have their own limitations and our device aims to address the underlying issue of drowning in the simplest way possible. Safety is also a big focus of our product, and we hope our product would ensure safer conditions for swimmers and lifeguards. It should be noted the device has no intentions of replacing a life jacket. Moving on to stakeholder needs and target design specifications of the Drowno. We based most of our target design specifications from the needs of our stakeholders, which would be lifeguards, the child supervisor, as well as the actual user. The device needs to be comfortable and compact. We aim to make it smaller than 5 by 5 by 3 centimeters. Ideally, it would be even smaller. It would need to allow the user to set the alarm sensitivity, in which case we would provide at least two different time settings to choose from. It would also need to be inexpensive, and so our device has a limitation of $200. For this project, we want to create a device which would reduce the number of drowning events for children while making supervising children in a pool setting easier. Another big factor in this project is comfort for the user, since we need the user to want to wear the wear and use the device for it to be effective. How does the drown now work? It relies on the premise that water stops signals from propagating. As seen in the figure, when the device is in the air, it is constantly sending once to either the graphic user interface or the receiver module. However, when it's submerged, the signal can't be passed and the graphic user interface slash receiver module reads null and sets off the alarm accordingly. Okay, try it again, yeah. Talking about the electronic components of the Drowno, as you saw in the video, the speaker makes a continuous buzzing sound which we use in part of our alerting. In the previous slide, we used an LED in our circuit as well. The speaker uses a simple amplifier circuit which consists of a BJT, a diode, and a resistor. This was needed as the speaker available was quite small. With a better speaker available, the sound produced would be much clearer and louder. Here's a clip of our initial speaker. The housing for the buzzer is fairly simple. It would be a compact box holding the circuitry which includes the peripheral beetle BLE Arduino. It would have a power on off switch, which is for adjustable time settings and the potential for a battery level indicator, which we'll talk about later in the future work section. The box would also be ideally quite small, easy to carry and waterproof as it will be near pools and water environments. The shell is the component that the child is wearing. This, mo this model is 3D printed and uses a silicone sealant to waterproof the device, alongside, alongside an o-ring to seal the wood. It houses the beetle alongside the battery which powers it. It fared well in the initial prototype testing, but has room for improvement in future models. Some improvements would be making it smaller, more streamlined, and more durable. Here's a clip of the shell being tested for waterproofness. The computer simulated buzzer is a graphic user interface that was created using processing. It allows the user to adjust the time setting, view time submerged, and also sends drowning detection alerts. To connect the graphic user interface to the Beetle, a Bluetooth USB connector is required. However, we couldn't purchase one given the circumstances.
Our first prototype test measured the beetle's Bluetooth range both in air and in water. In air without obstructions, the beetles remained paired to each other for 30 meters. In water, however, the connection only had a 2 centimeter range. This proved our prediction that the beetle's Bluetooth will disconnect underwater. However, the strong connection on land allows for a quick reconnection after surfacing. Our second test was to measure our wearable components shell prototype. Given that this was our first prototype, the shell did relatively well, remaining dry while underwater with no movement for a whole minute. However, with movement, the shell failed after a minute. The testing gave hope that further improvements can reach the waterproof values we need. Ideally, we would have liked to test the shell's capabilities under various depths as well, however, we did not have access to the required resources. A possible future improvement can be creating an app or a website, developing a mobile application would allow ease of use as people could use their phones to get alerts rather than separate hardware. It will also reduce manufacturing costs and we would not be producing a buzzer piece and its housing. Lastly, an app would allow multiple drowner devices to be connected to a single supervisor. We'll talk about this more later. As previously mentioned, some improvements to the shell would include a more secure lid, rounded corners, a more arched shape to fit the head better, and making it more aesthetic. As mentioned before, a battery level indicator would be a simple implementation. It simply allows for more user friendliness and works well with rechargeable batteries. The slide shows the construction of a simple battery divider. It's also important to note, if an app is developed, this implementation would not be required as there would be no buzzer. To increase compatibility and user friendliness, it would be beneficial for many Drano devices to be connected to a single supervisor. This would allow one person to seamlessly monitor more than one child at a time, which generally is the case at pools. For this implementation using the buzzers, a special group buzzer could be created which has multiple beetle BLEs inside. If a drowning incident is triggered, the buzzer could indicate using an LED which drown a device triggered it. For an app, the concept would be similar, but rather than the drown or device alerting buzzers, the alerts would be sent to a single smartphone. As mentioned before, this would reduce production costs as there would be as we would be able to sell individual wearable components. In conclusion, we were able to create a good base proof of concept for the Drano by creating a buzzer module, a GUI, and housing components. Throughout the project, we learned about the challenges that came with creating a wearable device, both in its hardware and software components. We also understood the difficulties of creating situational specific devices, in our case drowning, but it could be running, exercising, or sleeping devices. Overall, we had a great time this term and a lot of fun with this project. Thank you.